This is the video lecture for the Scientific Method in Real Life lesson plan. It was created and narrated by Sean Krupa and uses original material from Rebecca Bennett. This video and accompanying lesson plan are part of Ohio University's Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom project, funded by the National Science Foundation. What is the scientific method? Do you have your own answer? Take a few seconds to come up with an answer now. You can pause this video and resume when you're ready to continue. The scientific method is a method of research in which a problem is identified, relevant data are gathered, a hypothesis is formulated from these data, and the hypothesis is empirically tested. Let's go through the individual steps a little bit more closely. We begin by asking a question. The question you ask should be something interesting to you, and keep in mind that the research and experimenting you'll be doing is based on your initial question. Next, you conduct background research. You have to make sure that the answer to your question isn't already out there. If your question is unanswered, you need to find out more about your subject. And if it is answered, do you agree with the answer? Can you reproduce the experiment? This also brings in the topic of reliable information. Let's do an interactive test. Which one of these two sources is more reliable? If you answer the scientific journal, you're correct. Scientific journals typically involve the peer review process. In order to publish in a peer reviewed journal, your findings and methods are reviewed by a panel of experts in your field before you're allowed to publish. The next step in the scientific method is to develop a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess that you can further test. It should read something like this. If I blank, then blank will happen. The most important thing to remember about a hypothesis is it does not have to be correct. Here's another interactive test. Which hypothesis from the list below is the best? This time, there's no right answer. One hypothesis is not better than another. The next step in the scientific method is to perform an experiment to test your hypothesis. This typically proves your hypothesis right or wrong, however, sometimes it can be inconclusive. Always remember to only change one variable at a time, and good experiments have reproducible results. After you conduct your experiment, you analyze your data. You should be able to answer if your hypothesis was right or wrong. And were the values from your data what you expected? If not, should you check your procedure? Finally, it's time to draw a conclusion. Was your hypothesis ultimately right or wrong? And what information that you gathered supports that? Again, is it reproducible? Lastly, record your results. When recording your results and writing them up in a formal format, it's important to pretend that your reader knows nothing about your experiment. Also, a good record should allow the reader to go out and perform the same experiment and get the same results. It's also important to remember that they can be short or long. There's no right length. Now let's look at a real life example to understand the scientific method a little bit better. Rebecca Bennett is a former Ohio University graduate student. She studied water resources and environmental engineering. Rebecca's question was how is sediment being transported in the Hawking River? Rebecca searched journals and other sources of data to try to find an answer. From this, she formulated the hypothesis that the Hawking River has adequate sediment transport competence. Rebecca then gathered samples from the river and placed the information into a computer modeling software. Rebecca then graphed and analyzed her data. These were the results of her computer programs. Rebecca's conclusion was that based on the reduction of sediment size from the upstream to downstream end of the channel, it was evident that the river was not competent in transporting all the sediment delivered to it. This is a real-life example of someone putting the scientific method into practice. 
In summary, we saw a real-life example of the scientific method and reviewed the individual steps. If you have trouble remembering the scientific method, just remember the helpful phrase, Queen Rachel hopes every coward gains courage. This concludes the video lecture on the scientific method in real life lesson plan. Thanks for your attention.